Hello everyone, good to see you. Let's talk about hydrogen, its massive role in global climate discourse and resulting geopolitical shifts. No conversation on clean energy and climate goals today is complete without deliberations on this new buzzword that is hydrogen and its various versions that come with differing efficacies, technologies and environmental costs. These versions range from grey to blue to green to turquoise to pink and so on, each requiring a specific set of infrastructure and technological innovation. When it comes to clean energy and renewables, the region of Europe emerges as the front runner and there are several reasons for it. Europe has been a global pioneer in shaping the clean energy discourse, but nothing has accelerated its quest for energy security as much as the ongoing Ukraine war. Needless to say, the shift from fossil fuels to renewables and clean energy sources will also entail a geostrategic reset and markedly different supply chains that can be trusted and aren't merely cost efficient. So a classic example of what I'm talking about is the supply chain network of cheap pipeline natural gas from Russia that Europe was so dependent upon because it was super cost efficient. But it was also disastrously prone to being weaponized and therefore proved to be vulnerable and a non-reliant source of energy. Now, interesting that this situation also unravels some of the discrete questions about Europe's interest in Ukraine, which is touted to become the continent's hydrogen hub by 2050. In fact, one of the top EU officials clearly stated this during one of his recent interviews. Furthermore, it also brings attention to India as New Delhi recently came up with its own green hydrogen policy, which is aimed at making the country a net exporter of green hydrogen by 2030. Actually, it sounds very ambitious, but India has been trying to encourage startups and uh, hydrogen industries by giving massive subsidies. Subsequently, I'll discuss how EU views this potential. I mean, this potential that India has. I speak of EU's interest in India because in the midst of the ongoing Ukraine war, the European Union has vouched for 3 billion euros from its innovation fund to be invested worldwide for the production of green and clean hydrogen. Cooperation between India and European partners has been rising lately, where the latter, that is the EU, is aiming to help India set up clean hydrogen infrastructure. Now, it will not be oversight to assert that the road to Europe's transition to renewables is likely to pass through trusted connections such as New Delhi. But the question is, how realistic are these aspirations and what contingencies must nations be prepared for? Because uh, there is much more than what meets the eye. Uh, but first, let's understand why is hydrogen the big thing? Hydrogen's massive utility comes from the fact that unlike any other traditional fossil fuel like coal or oil, the combustion of green or blue hydrogen does not produce a lot of carbon dioxide. And at the same time, it creates high quantities of energy. So it's a perfect blend of what an ideal fuel should look like. Now, here's where the story starts to get more interesting because there is a constant search for the most energy efficient hydrogen variant in the entire color spectrum from gray to green to blue to turquoise to pink and so on. Currently, the bulk of the hydrogen that is produced is gray, which is produced by steam methane reforming of natural gas and by coal gasification. And this isn't really the clean version. There is another way of producing hydrogen and that is through electrolysis of water. When this electrolysis is produced by clean renewable sources such as water, wind or sunlight is when the obtained version is called green hydrogen. So that is the story behind green hydrogen. So green hydrogen is the universal favorite, but until recently, it was not very cost effective. But uh, with decreasing cost of renewables and increasing efficiency of electrolyzers, coupled with the green pastures of government subsidies, the industrial production of green hydrogen has picked up. And that is what has made this version a, a universal favorite. But again, that's not all. 
Yet another player in the clean energy game is the blue hydrogen and I'm sure you must have heard about it. Now, this is a totally different process of producing hydrogen from fossil fuels like natural gas or by coal gasification in a way that, unlike grey hydrogen, minimizes its greenhouse emissions. If done efficiently, GHG emissions can be reduced to net zero. But as with most emerging technologies, research on the environmental hazards of blue hydrogen is a mixed bag. And some peer-reviewed reports have shown that GHG emissions of blue hydrogen are actually far from net zero. Then there is a turquoise version that could be a solution for blue hydrogen's fuel and emission issues. So turquoise hydrogen does not require the same carbon capture, utilization and storage, the CCUS, as blue hydrogen does. Producing this hydrogen variant, however, is too futuristic to, to make immediate economic sense. Even more futuristic is the research around a version called the pink hydrogen, which can be generated through electrolysis that is powered by nuclear energy. Now, one major European player that can pioneer pink hydrogen production is France because, you know, a major part of France's electricity production is already nuclear. Now, what does all of this tell us about EU's evolving hydrogen pathways? You know, for the European Union, 2019 was a coming of age year in many ways, right from listing China as a systemic rival to sharpening its focus on Indo-Pacific engagement. The EU Commission also presented the European Green Deal, which has established the arduous objective of making Europe carbon neutral by 2050. Now, it sounds great, but its difficulty lies in achieving that goal while also maintaining the desired economic growth, which is already in doldrums because of the global recession. In 2020, the Green Deal was followed by the publication of the EU Hydrogen Strategy, which took a more realistic view of energy consumption patterns and requirements within the region. It was designed with a, what is called a phased approach that aims to phase down fossil fuels and simultaneously phase up hydrogen shares by 2050. This phased plan is largely divided into three phases from 2020 to 2050. Now, in the first phase of 2020 to 2024, that is currently underway, the EU is focusing on installing at least uh, about 6 gigawatts of renewable hydrogen electrolyzers and producing up to 1 million tons of renewable hydrogen. In the second phase from 2025 to 2030, the EU will focus on making hydrogen an intrinsic part of the bloc's integrated energy system and aims to ramp up production by uh, 10 times by 2030. That would come to be uh, almost 10 million tons. Now, the bloc has even bigger plans for the third phase, which is uh, to deploy green hydrogen in all large scale sectors by 2050. So it is a really ambitious plan. But where will all this green hydrogen come from and how environmentally sustainable will it be? While developing a hydrogen market has been the EU's objective for a few years, its latest documents have better clarity on the role of blue and green hydrogen within the bloc's energy regulatory framework. And this clarity is important and I'll tell you why. Because legal hassles within the EU's plans can be really daunting. While green hydrogen is definitely favoured, the report states that the EU will promote the use of blue hydrogen as well, at least until 2030, to compare the performance and viability of both the versions. Now, this clarity has been a welcome step in EU's markets because previous ambiguity on confusing legal frameworks on blue and green hydrogen had impeded infrastructural development. Taken together, the EU's plan of action for cumulative investments uh, to develop clean hydrogen production is approximately to the tune of 500 billion euros. But there are some more challenges ahead as the road to green hydrogen is not free from problems. To name a few, electrolysis requires ample amounts of water a clean, which is water, wind or solar, electricity supply and many other logistics in place. The biggest challenge to green hydrogen production is the fuel costs uh, accounting for nearly 40 to 50 to 60% of the entire production cost. 
Now, what is the way out? One is that Europe will have to shift its expanding hydrogen production outside the continent. Just like oil and gas supply chain diversification that Europe has currently been undergoing at an impressive speed, I would say, green hydrogen production will also require trustworthy supply chains that are cost effective and have smooth transparent routes that are not vulnerable to being weaponized at the whim of, say, political aspirations. Big players like uh, Germany have assessed more realistically that green hydrogen production in the future might be more cost efficient outside the country. For example, in its 2020 national hydrogen strategy, Berlin pledged 2 billion euros for hydrogen projects in guess where? Ukraine. So Europe has done some surveys to assess what geographical regions can be considered for expansion of hydrogen production. For example, uh, the Middle East North Africa region, the MENA region, is resource rich when it comes to LNG reserves, but the country's infrastructure development potential for green hydrogen is low due to lack of sufficient water supply. And I just told you how crucial is uh, ample amounts of water. In some of those surveys, India is identified as a renewable constraint, but partially high infrastructure potential region. So while it may not really champion as a net hydrogen exporter as New Delhi aspires right now, but it can play an important role in building infrastructure required by the EU in future. And if you closely study the various cooperation agreements on green energy between India and European actors, they have an overwhelming focus on infrastructural development in India. Now, why is that? It is because cooperation with India is assessed as a trusted connection. Therefore, green hydrogen production opens up significantly more possibilities for cooperation among trusted partners. The Ukraine war has shown that dependencies are catastrophic and even more so when not resilient, no matter how cost effective. The future of hydrogen and its role in Europe's energy security will generate an intersectional mesh of wide-ranging foreign and security policy imperatives alongside technological innovations. India, with its own timely policies for climate goals, can definitely join this bandwagon. There is little doubt that the future of the world's energy needs lies in clean production. Those pioneering the transition now will be setting the rules of engagement and rivalries around the most abundantly found element in the universe, hydrogen. And all this indicates to a brand new energy map of the world and perhaps a brand new politics around it as well. The link of this article is provided in the description box for those who'd like to check further references. Do tell me what you think of the video. Meanwhile, I'll be back to analyze another pressing concern in today's geopolitics. Until then, stay tuned.